What's up, everyone? All two people watching. <laughs> uh, I have an iPhone 7 Plus here with no display. I've probably done this a few times already, but I'm going to go over it again because not everybody watches every single video that I post. So we will go through the no display. No display is, is an issue that uh, has been solved and success rate on these repairs are pretty high. Um, same with backlight. Um, no power on the other hand is a different story. No Wi-Fi is a different story. Um, no cell service is a different story. But image, I feel pretty confident that we can figure out what the problem is for the most part on every iteration of the iPhone except for the X which we still have yet to explore but we're getting there because we're starting to see more and more iPhone X's come in now because I'm assuming they're probably getting off their uh, one year warranty uh, period so first thing I always do when I get no display is well first thing I always do with any phone is plug it into an ammeter and and uh, just to check to see if it's drawing any current or not um, if it's booting fine, then you should see it see it go up to about one amp, and then come back down when the phone is fully booted. Um, if the battery is completely discharged, then you should see it go up to about uh, one amp and stay there. Okay. So, um, so next thing I do is you always test to see if it's a backlight problem or a display issue. So you plug in a known good screen and you see that it's booting up and you look for an Apple logo in the middle screen while it's booting up. If you don't see any image at all then it's going to be a display problem. If you see um, a faint image then it's going to be a backlight issue. It's, this is important because the display system and the backlight system are two different systems. They're not really intertwined. Um, there's two different chips that run both of these systems. So once you determine that then you can say oh okay so this is a display problem. So this is a display problem. So how do you, when, when you know that you don't see anything on the display, you try a new screen and all that stuff, then what do you do? Well, next step is to go to ZXW Tools. Um, so you go to ZXW Tools and you can select your uh, phone type logic board and you can, you can probably click on this one but they also have this resistance map now which is a little bit annoying because you can't resize it so I would probably prefer this one so click on connecting seat resistance even though it's not going to show the resistance it's actually, it's actually going to show the voltage um, drop across the leads so this is this is diode mode um, why they continue to call it resistance I'm uncertain of and it's I think it's confusing a lot of people I, do, I really don't know why they call it resistance maybe it's something I don't know maybe it really is resistance I don't know so anyways, um, so diode mode measures the voltage and these little red numbers here um, says that this is going to be the voltage drop across your leads in diode mode. It should be around there, it doesn't have to be exact, um, of a known good board. Okay, so the typical troubleshooting um, steps are, um, as I described earlier, and then you go to this once you determine it's no display then you start diode moding every single pin on this display connector and you look for the one that doesn't quite match up with the value here um, so what I determined was that four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six, eight, ten. what I determined that this pin right here which is supposed to be showing 651 actually shows 0 which means that it's shorted okay so where does this pin connect well you have a capacitor right here um, and then you have a few components on the back side of this which attaches to a filter so don't forget to click on this filter right here and then it also connects to all these components right here okay um, next thing you do is you say okay what fails the most often um, and and the answer to that question is a big GER capacitor. Those are the things that fail the most often, and those are the things you look for first. Okay, so in this instance, um, I was hoping to find like a black spot or you know a capacitor that was obviously that has obviously failed, but I did not find that. 
So looking under the microscope, and then if you look at ZXW tools, um, so basically I think it's well let's check the ZXW tools again. So it's going to be this filter right here that connects these three capacitors. Okay, so so this filter right here, this goes to the connector, this goes to the IC side. So one, two, three, those big capacitors right there. But none of these look bad. So I mean, there's no cracks on any of them. They don't look burnt or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this filter off here and isolate which side the, the, the problem is on. I mean, there's only one other capacitor that that could be the problem on uh, on on the on the bottom side, which is the connector side of this. So, but I still want to isolate the issue because it it could be the front side. If it is the front side, then it's going to suck because I just disassembled the entire logic board and I didn't have to do that. So, so I'm going to go to diode mode and then I will just measure this side first which is still showing shorted I'll just do both sides just because so and then what I can also do is probably just I can just kinda diamond mode that side and let's see if I get anything I shouldn't get a reading because it's not really connected to an IC or anything so but my tips are really big so okay so it's showing OL okay so now I've determined that it's gonna be it's gonna be one of these three caps or the actual IC okay so easiest thing to do is really just to start popping these out right here um, so I got some brand new JBC C105 101 tips these are the 1.1 millimeter tips and they're pretty they're like 30 bucks a pop and anyways I'm gonna try to preserve these because my last set actually I see a little little bit of rainbow on this one so I'm gonna do that one first but I'm gonna try to preserve these tips a little bit longer this time. Well, my last one lasted maybe uh, three weeks. Sucks. Yeah, I think this one's failed. Uh, I saw a little rainbow on it, so <laughs> you look for anything you can, even though it looks perfectly normal. So let's test it again. No, it wasn't that one. So that was a guessing game, and it was wrong. Uh, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And today I have lost. Okay, so let's just go ahead and continue on with these, okay. And we will measure each one as we take them off since there's only three of them. Still sh oh! Uh oh. Did I not did I measure the wrong side? Okay, that that one's not shorted. Alright, this is shorted. So this is our shorted cap right here. We found that mother effer. And we are back in business. So let's go ahead and tin these MFers. I'm in a cussing mood today. Definitely a cussing mood. Okay. So let's just tin these mothers. And let's just go from there. Okay. Let's just tin these mothers. And then everybody's going to be happy. I'm going to do it with my. Um, tips. A brand new money tips. I'm kind of guilty of like scraping with my tips with these expensive tips, so that's probably my probably why these stupid things don't last very long. Because I'll, I'll 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 put pressure on them and stuff like that. So I'm gonna try to do a little better with this one, so I don't scrape away stuff with it. Okay, so let's put maybe this one back first. Uh, not that exciting. I don't know. People get size for these repairs anymore? No, not really, because I mean, there's solid solutions for them. Uh, seen them one, seen them. Seen them once, seen them a million times, right? <laughs> uh, okay, so let's get a new one of these puppies first, and then you know what? I'm gonna save this because I want to do some something, something with it. So let's find out what the value is of this capacitor right here, and then so this is a 10 microfarad 10 volter 0402. Okay, so we will go to our bag of capacitors here. 
and look for the one that says 1010. Um, if we get lucky, 1010. There you go. 1010402. Okay. So. Hmm. So, okay, so I got my capacitor, my brand new capacitor from digikey.com. And I'm going to go ahead and place this mother back. Um, I find it hard to get away from Screencast Omatic. That's the software I'm using to record my videos because I don't really like editing. Editing kills. They'll take my desire out of recording. So I try to do it in the best way I can. Okay, so one, two, uh, and then let's put this one back since this is not failed. We'll rotate it because that side is like all, I think part of the metal came out of that one. Alright, we're doing a good job preserving our tips today. Should probably put a little bit of, let's put a little, let's tin this mother. That'll make it flow a little easier. Okay, so I should I could probably put a little bit of uh, flux on it. Let's put a little bit of flux. I don't really do want a heavy dose of flux. Cause. Uh, not good. I guess I could just use heat or something, I don't know. Um, but let's just see if we can do it the easy way first. There we go. Oh no. Gotta be the ground side since it's a little bit harder to. Alright. Alright, I think we're good here. Alright, I think. I think I'm just gonna call it a day here, yeah. Call it a day. But before we go, let's diode mode this MFR and uh, make sure everything is good. So I should get about 0.59 or so. 0.59, we are back in business, no shorts, no shorts. Okay, and then before we really go, let's uh, put a little IPA on this and see if we can get as much of this flux off as possible. Whatever, it doesn't look great, but it's also not horrible. And then if you really want, you can kind of like turn your hot air station up to, I'd, I'd turn mine up to 250 with an airflow of 59 and then I just kind of blast it a little bit with some hot air then you can kind of IPA it definitely a lot easier with the um, with the VS213 Yeah, I think we're done here. Um, we don't want to get too crazy. Okay, that's good. I mean, that's kind of clean, right? It's kind of clean. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, so let's reassemble this mother. It's going to work, uh, and then we will call it a day on this. So... Uh, let me pause it and then I'll boot it up and show you guys this together live I like doing it live um, uh, because it works every time when you do it live and when it doesn't work you just don't post it on YouTube <laughs> uh, okay so you see the battery symbol no you see the battery symbol yay hold on a sec let's see if we can see it there you go. You see the battery symbol? Okay, there you go. All right, so we're back in business here. 
it was black before and we're back in business now so I'm just gonna let this charge up a little bit let it boot up and then I'll test everything and then I'll close it up all right but for the most part those are the steps that you take to troubleshoot an iPhone uh, no display issue um, and it's pretty standard for across all iPhones except for the iPhone X um, so I hope this helps you um, and if this is the first video that you are watching oh I was gonna say if you have questions don't post on YouTube post in our forum alright I will answer every single one of them uh, and then stay tuned for this awesome four-hour class <laughs> that I'm working on to make it better because we've gotten some I like to make everybody happy so we gotten some bad reviews on there and I don't necessarily disagree with them but um, but we're gonna make this course better we're gonna make it to to everybody's content and then it's gonna be great again or it's already great but it's gonna be even better so alright thanks for watching stay tuned for this oh look there you go boom stay tuned for this uh, promo for our four hour online video course learning how to do all this stuff thanks for watching so I just want to say thank you for watching this channel and I wanted to promote our online micro soldering course um, we have it hosted at udemy.com and it's at this point it's four hours of video instruction um, the reviews are pretty good um, and we talk about everything from the basics uh, of, of an iPhone logic board um, and then we have a section on ZXW tools um, we have a little section about how to set up your hot air rework station, your micro soldering um, station, and how to use diode mode. Uh, the third part is the three most common repairs, which is no touch, no backlight, no charge. And the fourth part is all about data recovery. So, um, if you go through our website, it's a hundred bucks. And some people say that learning online is not the best way. Of doing things or you can't learn micro soldering online I beg to differ um, I don't know about you guys but I started watching YouTube videos when I first started about three years ago and that's how I learned it um, and not only that but you know you go to a live course some people like live courses but not everybody has three thousand dollars to spend on a live course right so um, and then yes you're right you can go to YouTube and watch all these videos um, but you're not gonna when people make these videos they don't go from A to Z they usually start from somewhere in the middle because they assume that you watch something earlier on or one of their earlier videos so this course is all-encompassing it has everything from A to Z um, to help you get started in micro soldering and we are adding stuff um, on a weekly maybe monthly basis and we're, we're gonna just gonna keep adding to this thing and um, so if you want to get started just I mean you could also take a class but uh, you know to get your feet wet I think this is the best thing to do right here and I vouch for it um, thanks for watching the video I was also gonna say um, in order to buy it with a discount $50 discount just go to microsoldering.com click on store and then it's gonna be the first item on here you click on buy at Udemy and that will give you the $50 off thanks